So that's the end of the formal portion. I'm sure there are some questions, comments. Tom? Yeah, do you feel that, uh, you know, if you, if you let the companies loosen the operational guidelines, similar to what you did the last two years, will that provide for enough interannual uh, variability? You know, because the curves would be right over the top of each other every year if we did that. Mike? I'm not the expert on it. My sense is that there's not enough there, but Jean can answer that in a, in a model. But, but I guess my question is, yeah. what it help? Yeah. I, I asked that exact same question to Jean earlier today. I think every bit of extra very bit ability helps, but it's a question of how much until you start to get a meaningful change, I guess. But I think the more, the better. I don't know if you want to comment on that. No, I get a more. <clears throat> more space you get in between them. Every year, more variation you get, better it is. You'll have more gravel at different elevation, so there's a good chance that in the following years, you'll get better variation for walleyes, because you have gravels over a larger elevation. So depending on the water level in the right time next year, you'll, you'll be in a sweet spot for more chance to be in a sweet spot for the walleye reproduction. And same thing for uh, vegetation. The more variation you get, you get more wet meadows. Wet meadows is very important for product reproduction. So any inches of variation you get in the system, better it's going to be. It's not enough. In order to kill cattail, you'll, you'll need to have something like one meter of variation over several years. I think if people are not ready for that. but. It's the only way to control cattail by water level level, okay? You could control cattail with muskrat, probably. You could stress a bit cattail, but with some variations, but you'll need a little more than, than two inches. Uh, there are several other examples you could get, but more variation is really, a, it's a basic principle that, that, that Noah are showing that more variation you get for a year to another, better it is for the ecosystem. So it could be yes, then that is, it could be a good approach to take mm -hmm. to create that variability. And I think one of the things you have to remember is that within the existing rule curves is that we don't have the vari variability necessary to effectively control cattails. And one thing that you have to remember is that the power companies do have a bottom line that they're trying to follow, right? One of the things that's highly advantageous to power companies is having a steep winter drawdown because they want to produce as much electricity over the winter as they can and make room for the for the inflows in the spring. So that is detrimental to, to musk muskrat, right? So okay, okay. <laughs> why not because we speak about variability in very different ways. I'm talking about mid mean summer levels, okay? From a year to another. And you were talking about the, uh, the annual fluctuation mm -hmm. from from spring spring to winter. Okay. It's different variation. <laughs> So for the mean summer levels, okay, from a year to another, if you keep the system flat, so every, same level every year within uh, like a few inches, it's the best way to choke the ecosystem. Okay. So, I think to follow up on that, Tom, just this is the interannual curves that, that they develop. So if you look at how wide this band is compared to the width of the rule curve, ideally you'd have more, but as John's saying, if you could even be within that range, it'll be an improvement over what we've had, you know, during the last 15 well, years. What I'm trying to get at is yeah. that we go with feed, and we're stuck with that we have that curve, yeah. and there's a variability within that curve, either whether it's up to top or at the bottom, that it bounces all over throughout the summer. It's got to be better than what they were doing before, which was a straight line all the way across. And that's part of that, uh, you know, operational considerations they can look and say well we haven't had a, a nice beach year in three years let's really move forward with that as long as we don't have a flood risk or even if you do have a flood risk that's hold up as long as you don't have a drug risk so, yeah, question. Yeah. Could, could you could describe the operational who would have operational responsibility for the decision making under an adaptive regime we haven't discussed that internally but I my Feeling is that it would have to be the committee well, would have the responsibility to make any final decisions. Just operationally, you have to have some 
a small group that can make quick decisions that has the background to make uh, those so decisions. What, what and then how would the, the doctor operationalize their, their decisions for you? Would that be a specification to the dam operators? Or how, how is that? We've discussed that a little bit. I mean, you could have a, a seasonal call, so each of the four seasons you're getting in and the, the committee uh, figures out what the strategy is for that period. Again, within the rule curves, we're going to target the lower part of it. But you have to be adaptable because flows can change pretty quickly in the basin, so uh, your best laid plans might, but that might be an approach. You do it seasonally, but at least I can't see not recommending doing it at least every March ahead of the fresh house. You have to do that. But the rest of the year, it might just be as conditions develop. Mm -hmm. Suggestions? I, I just, uh, just thought it was an issue. And yeah. I, don't, I don't have any good savings. Okay. I'm a little careful about making too many recommendations that can, uh, the Water Levels Committee opens up a report. <laughs> We can't do it for this, 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 this reason. So we, we, I don't think, can appreciate everything that goes into that, but uh, we can make recommendations for what we think is well, good. Well, I mean, it's, it's definitely part of the DAP regime is yeah. that decisions have to be made and then they have to be implemented. Right. And so having clear lines of responsibility for those processes. And I think if you get into that more formal resource intensive uh, adaptive management approach where you actually have agencies involved and they're feeding information, but you're going to have a more formal meeting schedule and who's involved and who's got what responsibilities. So, but that may not be determined by our recommendations. It may just be we recommend you develop an adaptive approach that covers off these bases, but it's up to the commission and the committee to figure that out. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Yes? Where will the final decision on the property made and where will that take place? Sorry, the final decision? Workshop in May? Uh, that that may be a webinar, or it may be here, it hasn't been uh, finalized. Good question, yes, sir. Um, the curves here, the, could you just um, can't see the talk about, as far as the color coding there, the top one is Namikin, right, and the lower one is yep. rainy. This is Namikin, this is Namikin, this is rainy. The right. black is yep. the, the current, the 2,000 row curves. And the blue, this is a, an exceptional case, the interannual curves are not like our traditional rural curves. So the idea here is that in a given year you'd make a decision, are we doing curve one, curve two, or curve three, and that's the target. So it's not a range, but it's a, maybe you build a range around each of those targets or something like that, but so you intentionally are going a little bit higher or a little bit lower or we're in the middle. When you were describing the benefits and what you would need in 2000, the changes, and how effective they were ecologically and everything else on Amica, that why wouldn't that be a stronger model for what you would want to do to rain? I mean, just listening to your presentation, it sounded like everything you did on Amica was really uh, very beneficial. And yet, when you look at the two here, if you don't see that summer drawdown or anything on rainy, it seems like. So I, I think we're kind of moving beyond what the uh, curves did in, in 2000. So you remember in 1970, World Curves Namikin came down much deeper and came up. So we're even shaving that off more. You get almost no winter drawdown. You're coming right. up earlier in the summer. Spring. Yeah, you're yeah. doing the summer. But I'm seeing that your 2000 curve that you did for Namikin mm -hmm. seems to be very effective, much better than what was there before and that that seems to be ecologically and, and everything almost an ideal so why let, why do you do let our ecologists speak to that uh, quite a bit different one and what Matt uh, said is, is that the 2000 road curve is a lot better for the environment than this mm -hmm. 1970 road curve right yep. this being said you could improve 2000 road curves we developed enough quantitative modeling to say that it can be improved for the environment. Okay. It has some impact, and Jim can speak about it, because he doesn't like the lower, lowering the level for, for that idea. Yeah. The, the idea that, that is expressed in this curve is if we input 
variation during the mean summer, you will get lots of bene bene benefits. 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 And um, that's what it says. It's a concept. I and mean, we are starting to work with this fluctuation to see what is the impact. And we model the results. And it shows, and maybe we could show the results, but it shows that it improved the walleye by at least close to three times. Walleye reproduction three times. And it uh, um, like tremendous impact on muskrats. Muskrat is zero survival now. And, and we have uh, like close to 70% of survival, which is a lot. And same thing for pies. And all the, all the um, things that we model are improved by this type of curve. So 2000 is a good curve compared to 1970. Right. But it could be improved with it. Understand that, but I was just thinking of the difference between what you're showing for Namica and for rainy. It appears that rainy would be, if it was closer modeling what Namica is doing, it would be very beneficial for rainy also. So you're saying, due to Namica, due to rainy, what you did in 2000 for Namica, so the over, over summer drawdown and the my understanding is that rainy did, if you look at how far rainy comes down over the winter, yes. it wasn't nearly as much as Namek, so they didn't really address right, that. Right. There were slight yeah. changes in when the refill started. They did introduce a more gradual drawdown in the summer on rainy, which wasn't there before. And so that was the main change in the Wilkers for rainy like at the time. And uh, this summer reduction in little, summer drawdown, you call that, is, is beneficial for wilderness because it's, it improves a lot the wilderness uh, production. And having this fluctuation in the mean summer model is also very much beneficial for wilderness because it keeps the, the slow down in the draw, the slow drawdown for the, for the good production, but it also because you have different levels, you, you could, uh, it's possible for wilderness to grow at different levels for different years and exploit the nutrient there because the wild rice means less of nutrients, and this is replenished over several years. So if you use nutrients at different elevations, because you have different condition from a year to another, you will increase the production of wild rice in the system. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, 2000 ultra is good for a rainy compared to 1970, it's a bit better, but still, this ultra could be improved, mm -hmm. and we can show you that it's possible. I was just going to make a comment uh, to maybe simplify what he's, what he's saying is why don't you make Rainy change the way you did Namekin, but in reality they did that in reverse in 2000. We made Namekin more like Rainy in 2000. So instead of making Rainy like Namekin, we made Namekin like Rainy because Rainy performed so much better prior to that in 2000. So that's what we did. We, instead of making Rainy to be like Namekin in 2000. They made Namekin to be like Rainy. Right. If you look at those, if you look at those, and you put them over top, of there's not a ton of difference between the 2000 real curves. There's a little, obviously, but not not a ton. So, and there, and prior to that, there was a ton of difference between mm -hmm. Namekin and Rainy. So. But still, for the environment, it could be improved. <laughs> <laughs> Other questions or comments? Anything the study board would like to add or IGC stuff? Last chance. All right, well, thank you very much for coming out on this cluster night and uh, hopefully you like what you heard and uh, send us emails, comments if you uh, have anything else you'd like to add. Thanks a lot. Thank you.